master is my discoverer, is my redeemer, is my so much about what I am and I'm becoming. I'd say Arthur is a radical. He goes wherever his passions lead him, irrespective of the cost. No art school can compensate for, for being self-motivated like he is. I believe he's going to be the best photographer, the best artist. I believe he's so good. My name is Arthur Conrad Kisitu. I am a creator in the sense that I love to invent and come up with new ideas. And my ideas have been evolving over time. So in the first instance, I could say I was doing more decorative art, but it has been evolving into cinematography, um, a bit of sculpture, one thing to the next, it keeps evolving. Yeah. So I'm a creator in that sense, and I also, of course, love to dance. I do charity work with the kids in Kataga especially, and also at the Lake Bunyonyi with the pygmies of the shores of the lake. So it's a combination of the arts, charity work, and dance, and they keep um, these ideas all drive each other. I'm inspired with how he gets attached to the children and he wants to help. So that has made me want to even get involved in what he does. Um, when it comes to his art, his art brings life to everything. He brings life to something you don't see. So that gives you hope. Yeah. And um, I like the fact that he brings, he, he makes you look deeper at a situation. Like just don't look at what's on top. If you look more, there's, there's a lot more there than just how something looks. So through his art, he's able to bring that out, the beauty where you don't see it. Of course, I work a lot with glass lately because glass has turned out to be the best vessel to carry my passion and um, fascination with light. But I, I used to always love follow light and my first desire for light was manifested in the desire to do photography because photography is really the art of light and if you don't appreciate the way light moves you will never probably be able to get a good picture and then that desire to follow the light and capture it around objects people took me into portraiture and then I started the portrait home a company which I registered way back in 2007. Okay, the light itself is the end part of it, but first I'm um, working on the material, and the main material is the bottle because this year I'm specializing in wine bottle lamps that are recycled. Some of them I pick from the dustbin, others are given by friends. Sometimes I buy from the scrapyard, so it depends. Actually, I think Arthur's fascination with light is not a new thing. From, I think, the, for the 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago when I first met Arthur, 
Arthur was creating lights. They seemed a bit raw at that time, but they were still beautiful. He would combine rock with steel and wire, weld them together and still put a bulb somewhere in the middle. And so this thing with lights and Arthur has, has been long in coming. And even in his photography, you'll always find lights in Arthur's subjects. He will either position a light in the background or at some angle it will be just this ensemble of lights, but there's always going to be lights in Arthur's compositions, which is also typical of his studio. When you go to his studio, there's, it's just wired with probably a hundred lights. It inspires me that he uh... He, 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 he uses uh, materials that has been used before, which I really like. So this old tree might have been burned otherwise, and now I can use it. And uh, it's the same thing with the bottles. So he uses the bottles, he, he thrown away bottles, and he gives them a new life. So I really like that concept. And I, I like the stuff he makes, so that's in inspiring. So I know there is many studios around town where people go to take snaps, but I think there are very few people who invest time in understanding the emotions and feelings that you can capture, you know? So human beings are emotional, and the best way to capture a bit of those emotions and feelings is when you allow the person to feel comfortable enough that they can open up and trust you to release their feelings and emote. So on my part as the artist, I'm able to create that atmosphere where people relax and trust me, okay? And when they're able to trust me, then I'm able to capture that side of themselves that even they probably would not have known they're expressing. the way he works with children, like giving them an opportunity. So I think for me, for, for him, he has that ability of uh, like turning the negative into positive. So and that's a very, very good thing. That's really interests me about his work. As a result of doing what I love, other people are helped. It's an inevitable outcome that when you do what you love and you do it with passion, it will make your life better and it will also make the lives of other people who are involved in your life better. So I don't do it out of duty to help other people. It is just a natural outpouring of my heart and passion that when I go to Katanga and I'm documenting a story like Jackson's story, as a result of the impact, the story I'm documenting about him, he will feel more confident in who he is and when he becomes more confident in who he is and he believes in himself, then he goes ahead to inspire 20 other children that are under his care. Abana <laughs> Wala nyo, nani mbele kukumusa kwa zonae 
Now, Hope for Katanga is an initiative that was started by friends of ours who are in Canada and they met me at the Emerald Hotel where we were having salsa because I organized Dance in the Wild. Dance in the Wild is a dance program where I train and give people an opportunity to experiment with dance. We go for tours up country where we work with communities in the areas where we are doing the dance project. So we learn the traditional dance. And then we also have salsa and Latin dance classes. So when people come for these classes, we let them know about the needs and the charitable work we do so that as I teach them to dance, then they give back and in appreciation by supporting or donating. So this couple took up the Katanga project in the name of Hope for Katanga because that is just one area of my involvement. Asia for the beginning. Lucy, Asia, I use a cool jungle and Mokatanga. Second government, or one in Yaka. Nakunganya Vana Vano, Nagamba de Vero, get up for the love. Not to be the Medavana and Vaya. Lucy, the one in Bad Day, Jack Sulanjala. Neno Sanga Asia Kakozeji, the classes of Napoli, Vana and Vaya. A business graduate from Macquarie University, a professional artist with an uptown sense of style, he's traveled nations. If not in Berlin, he's in Uganda. But surprisingly, he chooses to reside in one of Kampala's most popular slums, Katanga Slum. I think in 2012, I did a research and went through all the media stories that we had done about Katanga. And I discovered that 20 of the stories that had come out before from Katanga were all negative. And I thought this can't be, because I stayed in Katanga for three years, and I was living up close enough to see that although these people were in a poor situation, there was a lot of talent, positive energy and potential in Katanga, and for the media to pick out and emphasize only the negative part was not fair. So. That year I organized with the people of Katanga, I invited them to look at all the pictures I had taken and I asked each family to choose a picture that best represented their story and we had the first public exhibition about Katanga for the people of Katanga in Katanga itself. Then I invited the media, I invited politicians, I invited uh, influential people, um, representatives from the different embassies and I think two weeks after that, the Daily Monitor did a very positive story about Katanga. And for me, this was evidence that when we took the initiative to show the positive side of Katanga, also the media, the media's eyes were opened. So that was a direct response. And since then, I've been seeing many other positive stories. So. After we published together the book about his grandfather, um, which I'm sure we are going to get back to, um, he told me about uh, a project he was doing in, in Katanga. And at the time I was invited by Bayamba Cultural Festival to, uh, to teach a photography workshop. And that would be the second time I would teach that workshop. And I told Bayamba I don't want to do that in the same way and I would prefer to do it together with a Ugandan colleague and not just me as a European coming in and, you know, sort of from a European perspective spreading wisdom in Uganda. I don't think that works. 
So I invited Arthur to do it together and also to do it in Katanga. Because one of the issues I saw with the workshop I had given the year before that Arthur was actually part of as one of the photographers was that most of the workshop participants didn't connect to what they were photographing. They were seeing it as something outside of themselves and something that their camera could capture, but not something they, they related to. And with what Arthur told me about, and I had seen also of how he worked in Uganda, that was different. He was really relating to this neighborhood and some of the people in the neighborhood. I was able to do an exhibition in the Sahara and I exhibited my work on the tents of the people and just like in Katanga before I exhibited the pictures and the short films I invited the people to come and see their work and pick which picture most represented them because I wanted them to be actively involved in deciding how the narrative of their story was being shaped. When I looked at the images that came out of Saharawi, geez, that is Arthur Chisito. It's like it brought out the best in him. We've also started an initiative between the kids of Katanga and the kids in Berlin with the help of my friend Johanna Kropman. When I visited Berlin some time back in 2013, I visited eight schools and I had carried a hundred pictures from Katanga that were painted and drawn by the kids about how life in Katanga on a day-to-day -day goes, you know. So the kids in Berlin had the chance to interact, ask questions and respond to the pictures of the kids in Katanga. So the kids in Berlin drew back, they painted back to the kids in Katanga and then we have this conversation that has started a dialogue and this dialogue is going to also grow because now we have started a dance program where the kids in Katanga are using dance to this time tell their story and I'm hoping that when they have done a choreography that we can teach the kids in Berlin, those kids will be learning traditional dances that are inspired by children from here and in future we even hope some of the kids in Katanga can travel to Berlin and be able to do this exchange when they are directly involved. So, as the kids in Katanga have grown and benefited from this uh, art exchange, we have also been mentoring them to have the desire to support other kids who are in a worse situation than them, you know. So the kids in Katanga now are going to start an exchange with other kids from the Pygmy settlement in Kavale, because the kids in the Pygmy settlements uh, of the hills at Lake Bunyoni, they are in a much worse situation than the kids in Katanga. I'm happy he is doing what he's doing for both for the dancing but for art and for the kids and for the pygmies. He's really creating a good communication, I think, which is good in between these people. And he really tries to speak up for the poor and the ones who is in need. one moment when I was going to be on TV for an interview and for some reason Urban TV took long to turn up and I was with Judith, my dance partner, and we were like, okay, these guys are taking long to come and we had some things to do. And then in that very moment it started raining very heavily, so we're like, okay, instead of focusing on the disappointment of these people not coming in time, why don't we just dance? So 
we just hit the rain and we danced and for the first time I was shocked but I was taken away by the experience of just feeling water on me as I moved and danced and uh, then we had our cameras recording this experience and when I watched myself and Judith both of us were giving each other the experience to play and just be children and it was really fun so I've done so many performances on so many big events but if you ask me the one single dance experience that stands out for me it's the first day I danced in the rain now I do it every other time because I discovered the secret so and also watching Judith uh, literally responding to every drop and feeling the rain and wanting to feel the whole of it and then that she was there to share this experience with me makes it even more valuable because it's one thing to have a good experience, but when you're sharing that same experience with another person in that very moment, it is so rich. So he, he's a voice for many of them. And I think that is it is his strength. Thank you.